y'all recommended to check out Moonboy. This is what we are doing today. Obviously, I know him. In the past, like in 2018, 19, he was known to be the first positivity guy, if I recall correctly. But I think he's grown a lot. I'm not keeping up with him that much, but the stuff I've seen from him in the past year or so were great. So I expect this video to be decent. I know his video production is pretty well done. So let's check it out. Five music production tips that are so powerful, they literally feel like cheat codes. At number one, we have Fire okay. Fire. This is a highly underutilized tool when it comes to learning mm -hmm. or even producing music. You can use the project file as an outline for your new song or new idea. This takes away the whole headache of creating drum patterns, FX risers, figuring out the structure, and allows you to skip to straight just writing an idea. I mean, you can pretty much tell all of this if you just download your favorite track. You can just pull in a track you like and learn from it, analyze it, analyze the drum pattern. You can pretty easily analyze the structure as well. Um, you don't necessarily need a project file for it, but I think this is going to turn into an ad for his pack because it says Moonboy Matrix MIDI synth vocal. So I think there's a there's an advertisement coming up, which will probably be named Moonboy Matrix something. Completely new. This is a great way if you really enjoy the energy or the feeling of the project file. Nice. Another great example, you can go into the unique effects inside this project file and change it up. So we have Project Matrix. Oh. It includes seven project files for you guys. There you go. Who would have thought it's an, it's an ad? Creative, I will make a ton of ideas, usually without any structure. But what ended up happening a lot in the past, it would get lost. Without any structure? You mean like a sound designing session or? Lost in the sea of endless project files. I know we've all been there. Losing some really, really sick ideas that we love <laughs> because we can't figure out where the heck we saved it or what name we did it under. So what I learned to do is to create my own own drops and melodies vault. And what that looks like is creating a new folder, my drops and Okay, so basically, I mean, it's a good point to stay organized from the start. I'd suggest you create a folder where you set your Ableton to save all of your projects by default. Once you finish an idea, you just have to bounce out the group stems, save the melodies if you made any cool chord progressions or leads, save the sound design as presets for your own, and just, you know, collect a catalog of your own sounds that you made from scratch. Um, you can also save your effect racks. I'd suggest to name the effect rack as your artist name and then the song that the effect rack comes from. So for example, I have a rack called No Sphere Polaris 12 Gun Rack. And I know that the post-processing in that rack is the same that I used for the Polaris 12 guns. So if I wanna do like a percussive gun, I can just pull that in no problem. But I'm not gonna reuse that sound because I, I just don't wanna reuse all of my sounds every time. And melodies. And then in there, you would create drops, melodies, this is where you create all your melodies, and then stems. Basically, you would have the full loop of the drops, full loop of the melodies in the melody folder, and then you can cycle through them and hear which one you like. This is sick. Sounded like uh, that Knock 2 track. Okay, but maybe I need a more depth steppy one. Okay, let's pick 145, 150. I mean, you could do that with just drums. Why not do it with drums? Okay, I love this one. You would just go into all the stem. Okay, I think this is just an ad. Nobody really works this way. The thing that actual producers do, which is similar to this technique, is just make a sound design session, design a lot of sounds, record the whole thing, and then slice up those sounds and put them in a folder that you name after yourself. So I have a nose for sound design random folder, which I have like countless glitches, whole exports of um, channels that are like half an hour long sound design, just tweaking something. You can organize that, obviously. I don't think it's realistic to, you know, have fucking tens of project bases saved. This is, this looks like an ad to me. In that folder, you can call upon it any time and Obviously, yeah, with the sound designing method I just said, you can actually like 
pull in sound design elements from from older projects even you can pull in racks you can pull in anything you can save midi files saving like only drop ideas is weird if you end up finishing tracks that you are happy with obviously you can save all individual stems and the project file in a separate zip maybe if you want to keep it for later if you want to you know just archive it maybe come back to it or use the basses in a different track yeah obviously but that's super rare so you are much better off with saving presets and effect racks because then you can later on if you want to reuse a sound you are not stuck with the bounced out baked in audio you can go back and tweak the settings just what he showed in the first one but that was the add part of the video so it's not really a um, realistic workflow in my opinion and just really really search through all your ideas really fast I up you know hey guys if these Okay, yeah, right now he's probably gonna say, if these interest you, you can buy this pack and it contains 50 or 60 or 70 or however many drop loops and you can use these, blah, blah, blah. good to you. I've included all of these 50 plus drops and melodies in my Matrix production suites. Literally, they're in all genres. Okay. creating a drop idea usually i like to go into my presets pop one open and start making okay yeah if you don't have any specific idea on what you want to do today you can obviously go and select some presets but i highly suggest to recreate set presets if you use someone else's you know learn the ins and outs of that preset so you can you can understand why it's working also if you made a big folder of your own presets obviously you can use those but i would probably make highly customizable presets just because it's easier to mess around with in the future if you don't want to sound the exact same in every single fucking project making a midi pattern yeah, yeah. it's so incredibly powerful to have the latest synth and bass presets out there and when i find the one i like like i like this one this one sounds really heavy one from it you know you can look at okay i think this video is a giant ad just for that thing he released don't forget to subscribe as well you know most people track any yeah. other synth you can even create multiple instances of this to double up okay serum has a standalone serum effects version where you can use the serum effects on any channel and you can create presets for that as well so it's it's in the pack i guess this one's a big one joining a community one of the most valuable things that i've done for my music journey as well is connecting with other producers the feedback you can get from another producer i'd say go with uh, feedback streams and patreons where they accept feedbacks because other inexperienced producers can give you feedback that doesn't make any sense um even experienced producers can do otherworldly stuff that doesn't make any sense so a good example would be in my opinion if you send music for feedback for for in fact, for example, he's probably gonna tell you that loudness is not everything because he makes music that is quieter and more groovy compared to like, I don't know, Sudden Death who, you know, usually maxes out LUFS wise. They probably would give a much different feedback to the same track you submit, but it doesn't mean they are right or wrong necessarily. They are just telling you what they think would be a good direction to the track but ultimately i think feedback streams that i do and also sisto does would be pretty um also what gqui does i don't know for a fact that he is still doing it but gqui me and sisto uh, usually give pretty technical feedback that's what i wanted to say so we give really technical feedback so that's the safest bet you really want feedback from an artist that's closest to your own sound so for example i would have wanted feedback from Marada back in the day when I only made gun music and nothing else. Just keep that in mind. Beginner producers also can provide useful feedback, but it's rare and it's uh, not likely. So the surefire thing to do is to um, get feedback from producers that resemble your sound the most. That I've literally almost scrapped and thrown away until I sent it to one of my friends and them telling me like, oh my God, really coming up with the concept of... Also, what um, Skrillex does a lot, which will help you a ton, is to not judge a project too quickly. So I fall into this trap all the time, but if you hate a track that you just made, don't delete it. Just save it, listen to it with fresh ears the next day or a couple of days later, and maybe you'll like it. I've found and finished old projects, which at the time I thought are shit, but now I feel like they're pretty fucking good and epic. And hell yeah. And it's also a great way to get 
Okay, remix contests and collabs. Remix contests are good, but go in with an expectation to lose because 99% of the time, the most popular song will win. Collabs are overly romanticized in my opinion. Collabs are super good if you collab with someone bigger than you who knows what he's doing because you can learn a lot from him or her but most of the time people think i gotta do a collab with xy who is much bigger than me and then i'm gonna be huge as well this is not how it works unfortunately not anymore at least you have to have constant good music output you have to aim for the long run if you want to make it as if your end goal is to be a touring artist you have to output constant good quality music one collab won't change it or releasing 10 collabs with medium size acts or small acts won't change it i would probably suggest to aim for collabs with friends mostly so if you have a friend that you really trust i mean really trust not someone who you look up to and you talk every now and then some some friend with good music that you actually really enjoy and listen to on your free time make music with them and don't expect them to keep your original idea and vice versa you can mostly change whatever you want if it's a real collab. Just be open to ideas and don't force anything. Guys, and that's referencing. I've learned everything I know and especially mixing and mastering by referencing my favorite artist's tracks. I yes, that's true. I, I did that a lot as well. Basically, you can, you know, download or buy songs from Beatport or Gumroad or artists' websites or um, what's that website? Bandcamp. And you can get the WAV files for a lot of tracks, even like free downloads. I'd say the best way of doing it is download the track that you want to resemble the most soundscape wise and pull up an imager and an EQ you're familiar with and just check out throughout five or six similar tracks just check out the peaks on the eq and check out the um, stereo field pay attention to the correlation meter how mono compatible the stereo image is just pull in one of your recent tracks and check out loudness on the eq spectrum check out the stereo field even if you want to be super precise you can download a multiband stereo imager like the ozone imager ozone 10 imager i don't know what's the most recent one but just download an ozone imager and just separate the frequent separate listen to the frequency stereo field and just check it out this really goes a long way every single little detail of my songs by doing this you develop an ear for what sounds good what works what hits and it's yeah that's true but that's only true if you listen to quality music so if you listen to generic cookie cutter 150 dubstep you know like super basic quarter notes and sustain you're probably not gonna be you're, you're not gonna develop that ear that he's talking about but if you listen to good quality music you can develop an ear for good music but that depends on the person i think because music is subjective so people like what they like you know if you like the cookie cutter dubstep that's totally fine strengthens your ability to hear what your music lacks all right to do this you grab one or two songs that that's also really subjective because every person's music is different obviously so every artist's music is different in a way so you really gotta develop and get used to your own effects and what you really enjoy hearing and take note on what you enjoy hearing from certain tracks so for example back in 2019 2020 i i enjoyed and i loved sudden death kill feed drums so I checked out at the time the most recent track they had put out. The drums hit at a certain frequency, which I really enjoyed. So I've been doing my drums the same way ever since. I like it in every song, so I'm doing it in every song and it sounds good. Yeah, you have to develop small little unique things to your own tracks like that and you're gonna be good. Are in a similar vibe to what you're making, throw it onto your arrangement, then you simply A and B mm -hmm. with- I'm jealous of that studio, by the way. I want a studio like that. X soundproofed and everything mm, mm, mm. what are the tops doing these are little intricate details that really really make a big difference another great thing yeah for example martin Matthews, he's a really fucking amazing drum and bass producer who has a separate screen monitor if i recall correctly it was a four by three monitor which he uses to analyze the spectrum of the track he always puts the same analyzer on it and he has literal tape like put on the screen and every time he makes a track he aims the hi-hats to be hitting the tape so it's like a literal measurement of, of loudness that's something you can do to be consistent that's something i do a little differently with analyzers on the master but yeah that's a that's a cool trick do with this is 
learning and also do yourself a favor and listen to some Matthews right now. Song structure, how did they bridge the drop to the breakdown or okay i'd say that was a pretty decent well-informed tutorial-esque tips video it was mostly an ad so i'm gonna rate it a four out of ten but don't make an uneducated decision these project files will help you in a certain way but you can definitely definitely do all of that for free with your own production. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy it, but I'm just saying if you're tied on money and you need it for something else, don't spend it on this. Instead, do your research, download some songs from artists. There's plenty of free songs and analyze those. So yeah, no offense to Moonboy or anyone. It was, an, it was a well-informed video and I know he's trying to sell his product. So I get the video, but for, for beginners, it's um, not the best could be better but this was the video hope it helped if you have any specific video you want to see type the title of that video into the comments and let me know what you guys want to see i can also do more production related stuff also i can do more breakdowns so if you guys want to see any breakdowns of any of my songs feel free to suggest them on the patreon or in the comments so with that said check out my preset packs to support my journey to get the visa also announcement i almost forgot you can now book one-on-one -on -one lessons on my website. So if you don't like DMing people, you can just straight up book it on my website. We can get things started. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to check out my website for a lot of high quality serum and vital presets and drum samples. You can also support me on Patreon where I upload bass music specific tutorial content every single month. Peace. Peace.